Good afternoon. My name is Bernard Gutierrez. I'm the Vice President of Solution Consulting with Model N. And today I'll be taking you through a short demonstration of how Model N helps life sciences organization maximize their true top line. Let's dig into it. Um, traditionally, when you think about revenue management, it comes down to pricing, right? You have your price times your volume, that pretty much equals your revenue. Well, in this new digital economy and with the growing new business models that are out there, this is becoming increasingly complex. It's not just about, for example, a set of prices where you uh, incentivize customers, but it's about all the different variables that go into pricing. For example, um, you have multiple regions. You have different markets for the same product. Uh, channels, um, distribution, direct, uh, there's a variety of different channels out there, and new emerging business models and products. New products meaning um, it's sometimes it's not just a drug competing against another drug or a device, but a, a combination of those. So there's a lot of new products that are coming to market, a lot of new channels that you really have to evaluate. So it's not just about that price versus volume anymore, it's about all of those different price points all of those different net price points that you have in the market that really determines your true top line. And it's not just pricing anymore. It's about all the different incentives and rebates that you're using. So, for example, um, you may be incentivizing the distribution channel, your end hospital, your pharmacy. There's a, a large mix of, of rebates that go into determining your net price point and chargebacks and distributor rebates over in your distribution channels, where traditionally these have all been in siloed, siloed areas. So for example, in your ERP system, some in finance system, some in your CRM, um, some really in spreadsheets. Well, that's where Model N's revenue execution platform comes into play. It allows you to maximize that true top line. It's the, the system of record between those ERP and financial systems and your front end systems where you're interacting with your customer the revenue execution platform becomes that system of record for pricing, quoting, contracts, managing incentives, and overall compliance. So let's look at the revenue execution platform in the context of life sciences or the commercialization process. You know, getting the prices on the market, starting your quoting and contracting, and then measuring your compliance, um, that is your uh, legal and governmental risk. Right. So it's very challenging because there is a lot of uh, different and new products coming into the market. So you really have to make sure that you get the appropriate design for your pricing and your revenue strategy, strategy in place before you actually start contracting. And then in contracting, there's a lot of different entities that are out there in the life sciences. There's the, the hospitals, clinics, but there's pharmacies, group purchasing organizations, uh, delivery networks, groups of uh, hospitals, clinics that band together to uh, basically get better pricing concessions out of the manufacturers. And then there's a lot of changing partners relationships. I'm sure you see this in the news with uh, CVS acquisitions, some of the distribution channels kind of consolidating, makes it very challenging to make sure you get those uh, right contracts in place. And finally, um, understanding the regulatory environment, making sure you take care of Medicaid, Medicare, uh, your governmental um, price reporting, and also your international uh, reference pricing or your price reporting internationally. And that's where our revenue execution platform helps you in the three areas, sales strategy, contract, man contract management and execution, and revenue compliance. Kind of at the beginning, get your pricing and your strategy in place, um, followed by Quoting and contracting, once you have your base prices or your, your uh, list or WAC prices, wholesale acquisition costs in place and on market, how do you start contracting and quoting with all those entities, and then how do you measure compliance? So we'll go through these three areas today. We'll start off in um, Model N's global price management, and we'll look at a solution called Launch Sequence Optimization. Launch Sequence Optimization allows you to optimize your prices when you go to market globally. What I mean is you have to launch products in a large set of countries, just say Europe. So there's a large set that you have to launch. What launch sequence optimization allows you to do is to import your plan, so what months you plan on launching and what your tentative prices are, and allows you to optimize. It'll make adjustments to price 
and the sequence that you're going into market to allow you to get the best prices that will optimize revenue over time. So let's go into Model N's launch sequence optimization solution. So here I am in Model N's uh, GPM environment. Um, and here I am in our scenario manager. So you can set up scenarios for simulating or optimizing different launch plans or launch strategies. So for example, this one we're looking at our Trulicity 1.5 milligram for pen. Um, so this has already been run. And what it will do is it'll evaluate, again, all of those prices with all of the dates or possible dates that you want to launch in country. For this launch, a new product launch, we're uh, pushing into market. The optimization will come back with a quick view of what your net revenue is going to be. So this is obviously a very large launch. And down below, I can see all of the countries that I'm going in. So from our original launch, we import a launch plan. Um, the optimized launch, here we can see the delay months where Model N is recommending a delay, for example, a four-month delay in Bulgaria. Now, the optimization engine has a very good reason on why you want to delay or accelerate launches. It comes down to how you get your products and prices in market, right? This is launch sequence optimization. This is about a price output, which I think is a great view that shows you the power of what Model N can deliver, right? So I'm going to scroll down a little bit. Here's our country. Um, our going into market launch price, right? So we're normalizing by the European currency. Um, and here's our launch plan. The yellow area here is our launch window. So when you're, a, when you're launching in a country, you, you don't necessarily uh, get to choose the exact month or day that you go into that country. A lot of it is determined by your Ministry of Health in the country. So you, you, you establish a launch window on when you would like to launch. Right. And this is the possible months that you can launch. Right. So six month window for each country. Uh, the green is when it goes into market. So as you can see here, we're going into the UK first at 737.17, then going into Belgium, France, Germany, Greece uh, and so on. But as you can see, the optimization engine has made a couple recommendations. First of all, it shifted the launch window. So we're delaying France by, for example, um, one month. We're delaying Germany by three months. Uh, Greece by another month. As you can see, um, we helped them determine, A, the right sequence to go into market, and B, what price to go into market. Because what happens on a global perspective, from a global governance or compliance perspective, outside of the US, the uh, European and actually a, a lot of countries in the world um, reference prices in other countries, right? So what this means is if I launch in Belgium, France, and Germany, um, when I start launching in other countries, they will start referencing those countries and basically taking a formula for determining the price. So you can see here that we've delayed the launch in a few areas, but as we scroll out, you can start to see some of the impacts of, of launch sequence optimization when these countries start referencing, right? So how does Model N help countries get into market? First, uh, by getting the right prices uh, in the right sequence into market. So for example, here, I can click on our enhanced summary and it gives you a quick view by country of where you are making and, for example, losing money. So in this case, you can see our, our, big, uh, our big revenue drivers over here and which countries may be impacted by, by excessive referencing. So again, the, the purpose of launch sequence optimization um, as part of our global price management suite is to really get the right prices into market. Optimize your prices that you're gonna start contracting. So this is kind of step one. Optimize the prices that you're going into market. So I'm gonna flip back to PowerPoint real quick. So we reviewed launch sequence optimization. Now it comes down to pricing, contracting, and compliance, right? And that's where Model N's Revenue Cloud again comes into play. It helps you manage all of the contract prices, all your channels, all your rebates and incentives, chargebacks, which are basically all of your distributor rebates, prescriptions and other areas. It's basically the, the core of the application. Once your prices are on market, um, you can manage the price change process, but really it's about quoting and contracting. And that's the second component um, of our solution suite. Okay, here we are again in Model N's uh, Revenue uh, Execution Cloud application. 
In this area, we'll be looking at, uh, now that we've got our prices on market, our, our base prices or our list prices, how we can effectively maximize our true top line through the act of contracting. All right, so here I am on my home page. I'm gonna drill into a specific contract, a pre-built contract. This one is with Premier. So Premier is a group purchasing organization group of hospitals, clinics, and others that group together to do large buys or um, get volume discounts um, across the organization. They can get very complex. But this is the overall contract um, supporting direct and indirect, so they can buy through um, directly from me, the manufacturer, or through any of my wholesale uh, or distribution partners. The left-hand side here is my table of contents for my contract. I have price programs, so on invoice uh, discounts, for example, to incentivize them. Rebates and incentives, so off invoice, um, rebates, fees, incentives that they get. Some eligibility, who's authorized to buy off this contract. Um, pricing commitments uh, for compliance measurement and training partners. So since it's a direct and an indirect contract, um, I can uh, make sure that they can only buy through authorized entities. Again, the, the channel aspect of, uh, of Model N's uh, revenue execution platform. So up here I have my price programs. Let's go into our Apollo tiered uh, pricing program. So here is our, our pricing program. And in this one we're establishing um, a fairly uh, standard tiers based program. So buy above your tier one, if you buy any, if you buy greater than 100, you got a tier two and tier three um, and so on. So it's a, it's a very common practice. Uh, it can get a little bit more complex than this with other uh, price strategies that you can execute. But this is a pretty fairly easy one where you can set up across all of your products um, different tiers. So for example, tier one, we're giving them a 3% discount across all of our products. Uh, tier two, tier three. Um, makes it easy to set up these tiers and authorize. So on a tier one, I get a 3%, tier two, I get a 6%, so on and so forth. But you can set up different types of price strategies. We have um, probably close to 100 uh, pricing and rebate strategies embedded within Model N that allow you to quickly configure uh, different pricing and rebate strategies. So we have a single for our Apollo, our Apollo uh, de medical device, um, we have a three-tier program in place here. But we also have rebate programs, other types of incentives that get you to a true uh, net price, right? And we have three here. You can see them, a, a group purchasing, a GPO admin fee. So this is paid to Premier, right? Premier um, gets paid when, gets paid a rebate uh, quarterly or annual, annual rebate. Uh, this is paid quarterly, actually. Every time the product is sold to any of the members of that organization. And it's fairly easy and fairly common. They have a 2% fee um, that's paid to the GPO, um, which, is, uh, which helps them you know, facilitate the program. And then their members, each of the members can have different types of programs. So in this case, all of their members that subscribe um, have a two-tier um, program. This one's based upon volume. So if you buy greater than 300 units, you get a 5% rebate. Uh, greater than 500 units, you get a 10% rebate, right? So depending upon which products, and you can specify which products um, or all products, for example, they, your members, so the hospitals and clinics, will get um, a standard 5 and 10% rebate, a two-tiered rebate. But you may also have different types of, uh, of rebates. In this case, we have a performance one that's only applicable to our Apollo wire uh, Freedom Praxon. So for example, new products, very common. You have a new product, you want to incentivize the demand and not just based upon, you know, one tier, two tier, but you want to get them to be paid upon performance. So in this case, we are looking at a combination of a volume and a growth. So for these specific products, they have to hit a period over period volume goal, 50, 100, 250. Um, but period over period, they have to hit a growth. So in period one versus period two, I need to grow by 5%. If I want to get a, an additional 1% uh, rebate, grow by 10%, you get a 2% rebate. Grow by 15% or more, and you get a 3% rebate. So this is a, a good example of some of the types of complexity that Life Sciences is looking. They want to make sure they incentivize the, the group entity. They want to establish a baseline of performance 
for their members. And then they want to have, you know, growth base to incentivize growth. So, you know, the more they buy um, and the more they grow, then the more rebates um, they'll get as part of this program um, explicitly. Right. So, so very powerful. There's a lot of other rebate programs in here and price programs that will look at things such as market share, um, bundling of products, so buying groups of products together, and some of the newer ones, rentals, leasing, um, and for capital equipment, uh, subscriptions are also. So some of these new business models, they can just directly drop into a contract to, to help incentivize. Then we have down here our eligibility, so who's eligible to buy, because as we have it's a group, um, you, can, you, know, you can really finely target different types of entities that you want to incentivize. Additionally, I can start looking at measuring compliance, so price compliance. So in this case, um, just a quick explanation, this is Premier, our GPO, and they may have multiple members. Right? I kind of spoke about that, that band together. So we have, we have Alaska Surgery, Divine Group, Mercy Health System, St. George, uh, and St. Valentine's Hospitals, right? When, um, when uh, these entities sign up or, or subscribe to this contract, they can choose different tiers that they want to, um, that they say they're going to achieve. So for example, Alaska is saying, oh, we'll achieve tier two along with Divine. Mercy Health System is going for a reach. So they're, they're projecting that they're going to do a higher volume of uh, tier three, right? This can be used for compliance measurements, meaning you can reward customers who actually hit their compliance. So I'm going to go back to my homepage. That's a summary of the contract. We establish pricing, we set up some rebates, and the entities um, from our purchasing organization um, commit to certain volumes to us. Um, I'm going into our compliance package, and I'll, I'll skip a few steps, but we'll look at, at uh, the compliance period. So once the contract has been executed, uh, Model N starts processing uh, the data, all of your transaction data. And it, it uses this data to effectively pay rebates. And, and that's a, a huge area that we help with revenue leakage because these co contracts can be very complicated. Model N has all the traceability of the entities, who's eligible, what products they're buying, and so on. Right. So here's a compliance period that you run periodically. So here you can see our Alaska, Divine, Mercy, St. Hospitals. You can see the tier that they committed to, um, as we reviewed before in the contract. So con contractually, they say, I'm going to hit this tier. But not everybody always hits their tier. So here is their attained tier. So you can see here that Alaska Surgery is out of compliance. And the Model N application can help you automate the response to that. So, for example, we're going to override their tier. We're going to, we're going to downgrade them to Tier 1. As opposed to paying them the, the preferential rebate in Tier 2, we're going to downgrade and override them to Tier 1. Let me see. Mercy is compliant, which is great. A couple are even over-compliant, so they qualify for the next tier. We committed to 2, but you actually attained 3 with the volume that you achieved, which is which is great, but even an overcompliance um, situation is, is still a revenue opportunity because you want to make sure that they know that they could possibly hit other, other benefits to, to higher volume purchases. Here on St. George, we're overriding, um, we're taking them, they're overcompliant, so we're basically taking them up to the next tier. So the system can automatically re tier, move them up to the appropriate tier, move them down, let the system determine it, or just maintain. So even if they are. In this case, for Divine Group, um, they attain Tier 3. We're going to keep them at Tier 2. So the, the whole point of contract compliance is that, A, we measure it um, based upon actual transactions, and we can take action on it by either adjusting their tier or keeping them on to uh, the same tier. The both net, net result is revenue improvement or opportunities for revenue improvement um, for the, uh, for the manufacturer of the life science entity. That was a quick tour. Again, we reviewed uh, the contract aspect and setting up pricing and rebate programs and measuring um, compliance. Uh, the last area I would go to is, uh, is intelligence, right? So we, we've got so much rich data in terms of all of this pricing, contracting, 
um, rebate data. We have an intelligence application that allows you to analyze and report. So we saw some aspects of that in launch sequence optimization. This, for example, is the deal dashboard. This is when I may be doing a contract amendment or a contract renewal or, or basically quoting. I can bring up this dashboard for our Mercy Health System. So when I'm going to go walk into Mercy Health Systems and do some contracting or have a quarterly business review, I want to understand what's going on with this customer. So I can see all of their pricing on their Apollo, the contracts, um, the pricing that we just reviewed in the contract, what their committed tier is, what their committed volume is, and what their contracted prices is. So are they getting the right price? Um, as they are purchasing through a group, they may be able to purchase through multiple um, entities. You can see here through Vizient and through Premier. So I can see the tier prices across that. And if they're getting close to a specific tier, again, I can have that negotiation to, to up tier or get them onto the next tier. I can also look at their commitments and see whether they're hitting or whether they're missing their commitment, their sales price, and their product sales trend. The point of, uh, of the intelligence suite is there's A, back-end analytics for measuring gross to net, product, contract, performance, those type of things. And then all of this information is made available at quoting and contract time. You know, work with that uh, entity to maximize the value for that overall contract. Right. So um, that was a short demo. It's a short demonstration um, of how Model N, as seen through the lens of a life science manufacturer, how they A, get the right prices on market, so your list prices globally, and then B, how they can contract price or contract and structure the appropriate pricing and incentives to maximize that revenue. And then finally, how to measure it using contract compliance and also leverage that information for the next contract negotiation, the next quote they're gonna be buying out there. So I hope this was helpful and thank you for your time.